Hello, Hugo Conf. My name is David Large. I'm a digital content specialist at Cloud Cannon, and I'd like to begin my talk with a question. Now, I'll post this question on Twitter as well, and I'm keen to hear your experiences, so please answer in the YouTube live chat or on Twitter. Hashtag Hugo Conf. Thank you. How many times have you helped a content marketing team or a client make basic content edits on a Hugo site? Now, for many of us, one of the main reasons we choose Hugo in the first place is to have more control and efficiency in the development process. But if that comes at the cost of your non-technical team struggling to update content and relying on you, the developer, to make changes, then was the switch really worth it? If this is a familiar problem for you, then hopefully over the next 20 minutes or so, I will offer a useful solution. Today, I'll show you how you can keep the dev environment you actually want to work in and give your content team autonomy over their content, over their site, all without worrying that they're going to break the site. Let's start with a sneak peek of what we're heading towards. This is a Hugo site. The content here is populated from structured front matter, which content editors can edit in context directly on the page, from headings to sections, from icons to hero images, and everything in between. They can even change and rearrange components within other components and always see exactly what it will look like before they hit save and build their sites. Now, this is where we're heading, but first let's step through the typical ways you might have your team update content on a Hugo site. Now, the most basic option is teaching your non-technical team Markdown and GitHub most commonly. Now, you might have a couple of training sessions. You might show them how to use the GitHub interface, explain the directory structure of a Hugo site, teach them some of the most common markdown conventions, give them a few cheat sheets, and send them on their merry way. If your team is already familiar with markdown and Git, this could well be enough. What's great about this model is that both developers and content writers can collaborate seamlessly and take full advantage of Git workflows. Let's say, for example, you're revamping the homepage on your Hugo site. You create a branch. The dev team focuses on developing new page components, while the content team works on the content. While the homepage revamp is going on, you can push out new content and bug fixes to your main branch. When the homepage is ready to go live, Emerge will publish all the code changes and content in one fell swoop. Everyone's workflow, of course, is unified with Git. The trouble is, most teams do not have the luxury of having a semi-technical content team. Most content teams, in my experience, would rather be creating content. For these teams, implementing this strategy will end up as a workflow of content team members emailing Google Docs and Word documents and sending Slack messages with content changes to the engineering team to load onto the website. And this is frustrating for everyone. The content team, for their part, is hamstrung. They can't publish content themselves on their own website. The engineering team is overburdened with content changes instead of developing new features for the website. There's got to be a better way! At this point, you might offer a markdown editor. These are cloud or desktop software that add a GUI to edit markdown. They provide a preview which gives the content team confidence they've marked up their content correctly. Many Markdown editors also sync with Git, which brings the editing experience closer to the save model of, say, a Word document. With a Markdown editor, you've streamlined the editing and publishing experience and will likely have less handholding and more empowerment for your content team. It's a great setup for simple content, and it solves some of the issues of editing Markdown in GitHub directly. The problem is, of course, that while Markdown is relatively easy to pick up, it's also pretty limited. For long-form content like a blog post, it might be a good fit. Blog posts, after all, are often mostly headings, paragraphs, and images, which is bread and butter for Markdown. However, typical marketing web pages have hero images and headings. They have images and text blocks. They have beautifully designed testimonials and a variety of other page components to make the website more engaging. Markdown is simply not equipped to handle this kind of structured content. So, Markdown itself is too limited for your site. Now you might start looking at a headless content management system. A headless CMS completely separates the content for the site from the Hugo source code. Instead, the content lives in the CMS and will be downloaded as part of Hugo's build process. 
With a headless CMS, you create your own content models. This gets you around the limited simplicity of Markdown. For example, you might have a staff page where every staff member has a name, a position, a bio, uh, an image, and a link to their Twitter account. You're able to build a model for a staff member where each atom of that staff member has a clear UI and can be accessed through an API, allowing you to populate a component on the Hugo site. You can break down even the most complex content on a site into a content model, allowing your content team more autonomy. It does come with extra trade-offs, however. We've given up our Git workflows, and all of our content now lives with a third party. And now we also have a disconnected workflow between the engineering team and the content team. There's also a disconnect between editing content in form fields in a headless CMS and what it will look like on the live website. This is especially felt when your marketing team is trying to build brand new pages using components. There's no way for them to know what a new page will look like unless they actually stop working and wait for a preview to build before they carry on. So we want to add visual editing to the equation. If you're trying to solve the visual editing problem, you could turn to a basic website builder. These work well for consistency and for page previews, but we're still lacking our Git workflow. Our content still lives in a third-party service and our engineering and content workflows are still completely disconnected. And worse than that, we can't use Hugo. So if we want something intuitive and visual for our content editors, let's look at a visual Git-based CMS. Visual editing is the most intuitive way for a non-technical team, even a semi-technical team, to update content as they can see exactly what it will look like as they type. No markdown knowledge is necessary. No guesswork is necessary. No waiting for previews is necessary. This is Cloud Cannon, a visual Git-based CMS. In the editor, I can see my entire website. A yellow box indicates content that I can edit. Clicking on this box allows me to enter content directly on the page. I can create headings, edit text, or do any other basic text formatting. I can even edit the front matter directly on the page. Now, when I save this page, it's going to commit the changes back to the repository. As you can see here, there's the front matter change and the markdown content I added earlier. A Git-based CMS not only saves changes back to the repository, it also automatically syncs any changes made to the repo. Here, we'll put our developer hat on and make a change directly to the layout. Now, if I go back to the editor, I can see that Cloud Cannon has automatically synced those changes and built the site. And it now shows the changes the developer made. We've seen how easy a Git-based CMS makes committing to a repository. What about other Git workflows? Let's say I want to completely overhaul the homepage on this site, but it's going to take me a couple of weeks. In the meantime, I want to be able to push content and bug fixes to the live site. A developer would use a branch to accomplish this on a software project. With a Git-based CMS, now editors can branch too. This is the project view of my website. By clicking Add New Site, it'll prompt me for a site name. Clicking Create Site will create a branch and create a new site on Cloud Cannon, which syncs with this new branch. Now I can open the branch site in my editor and make my drastic changes without fear that it will impact the live site. If I get too crazy, I can always delete the site and create a new branch. When I save the changes, you can see it's committed to my big changes branch. And looking at the original file on my main branch, you can see it still has the original content. All sites on Cloud Cannon have a live preview domain you can use to gather feedback from your colleagues. You can even put your live production domain and host on Cloud Cannon. Our infrastructure is backed by Cloudflare, making it among the fastest on the web. So I've got feedback from the team, and now I'm ready to publish live. I can go to the Publishing tab and see a list of changes on this branch. Clicking Publish will merge this branch into the main branch, which will trigger a build and deploy it to production. Now, as a developer, you have full context and control over everything that's happening on your site right from GitHub. And viewing the same live site, we can see that our changes are now indeed live. That was pretty quick and pretty painless, editing on the site itself with Git behind us every step of the way. This certainly makes editing easier, but we're still editing markdown files. Modern websites are often powered by structured content and components. 
For full editor autonomy, you'll need a well-documented component library and a way for editors to add, remove, update, delete, and reorder those components on a page. The content team can use these components to build fully fledged pages entirely from scratch and without a developer. Storybook would be a strong first choice for managing your component system. It helps isolate and display all of your custom page components and trigger their various states. This is great for engineering teams and content teams alike. Your developers just focus on building high quality components. Your content team can see a list of all the components available to use on the website. Now, of course, Storybook was really built for React websites, and unless you're a poor soul using React on Hugo, you're out of luck for any sort of Hugo templating. To use Storybook, you have to maintain an HTML version of each component which lives in Storybook, and another almost identical component with Hugo templating which lives in your Hugo site. Now that's a lot of extra work for a component system, and sooner or later, your Storybook components and Hugo site components will get out of sync. Which is why we created Bookshop. It's an open source, standalone component browser and playground. Better yet, Bookshop understands Hugo, so you can write your components using vanilla Hugo templating with no extra JavaScript or other dependencies required. And ESBuild under the hood brings faster build times and quiet laptop fans. For all the complexity it offers, Bookshop is actually quite easy to configure. Here's the way it works. You add each component to the Bookshop folder structure and define the data it's expecting. Your components work exactly like a Hugo partial. You can use Hugo templating, pull in data from an external data file, and really do anything else you can do in a partial. Bookshop also builds a component browser that can embed anywhere on your website. This means content editors get to use your website styles and assets and see them all in one place. Better still, Bookshop has tight integration with Cloud Cannon, a Git-based visual CMS. So now your content team has access to the full component library without leaving the CMS. Let's look at the editing process now within the CMS. You'll see we can make changes to the contents, and they're rendered on the page live as I'm typing. So I'll change the preheading. Let's prepare for Hugo instead. And we can change the heading as well. Hello again, Hugo Conf. We can swap in new images and icons the same way with the same quick results. We'll explore existing and choose home6.jpg. Finally, let's add in a cheeky link to our new favorite Hugo Conf. URL. Once the URL pops in, we will have a live preview of the page just in case. So we've edited within a component, but let's make another one. We'll click on the blue plus icon, choose add new, let's add a counter component so we can show numerical information. Within that component, we'll add sections. So we'll add a number. Let's say, I think at this point, we must have more than 500 people attending HugoConf. So 500 plus attendees, We'll back out of this, add another number. I think at least 25 speakers. Let's add in 25 plus speakers. And one more for good measure. Two days of all you can eat, Hugo. So we've completed one more component. Let's shuffle it on the page. We can move it down or up. Let's take it down one more. And we've doubled up. So let's remove the old component, click trash, and then remove it. And there we have our page. Now, to show you what's happening behind the scenes, let's go to the source editor. We've made a change in visual, and in the source editor, we can see our changes. And of course, we can add anything here, and it will show up if we flick back to the visual editor. Hello, once again, Hugo Conf. So, Let's review our changes. We can batch together as many changes as we like before we're done and save them. Now, once the build is complete, and it is pretty quick, thanks to Hugo, then we can see our live preview site. So the component system, your content, and your Hugo source code all live together harmoniously in your Git repo. This is the kind of flow that you might have expected from a React-based SSG, the live editing on the page, the instant preview, in Hugo, it's pretty magical. We can take this even further by having components within components, the Russian doll nesting components. With nesting components, you can create a high-level component. Let's say a two-column grid. 
And within that, you can add and style lower level components to build out the content of your page. Here, we can add a heading block on the left hand side. We'll make it H3 and add some text here. Great content on our heading. Let's add a block under that, a paragraph block, and we'll fill it with some paragraph text. Jump back out and head over to the right hand column. Within that, let's add an image. We can choose the path for the image, explore existing files, we'll add in our hero. And now we can style that hero, let's align vertically centered. And here we have a brand new component on the page made up of smaller components. But we're also staying on brand and inside the bounds of the component library. So we think, just quietly, that we've got something pretty amazing happening here for Hugo sites and for Hugo devs in a manner that doesn't get in the way of your dev flow and allows you to hand off sites to clients or coworkers with minimal effort. And importantly, minimal ongoing support and content loading tasks. What we're really enabling here is a do-it-yourself website builder your own custom components on your own Hugo site with your own Git repo. This is an entirely new way of thinking about web development for static, and we're only starting to scratch the surface here. We've been working closely with many of you in the Hugo community to make the integration as seamless as possible while providing workflows that simply haven't been possible before now. We've already deployed Bookshop on high traffic websites for global brands, and we're getting really positive feedback on the experience. There's still so much more we can do with this framework, and we're excited to get this in front of the Hugo community. Try out Bookshop on your own websites, build some components, and help provide feedback to shape the future of component-based workflows on Hugo. Bookshop and Cloud Cannon are the key ingredients here that allow content teams and clients to do more on Hugo sites, updating content, reordering components, creating new content from a handcrafted component system, even creating entire pages from scratch without requiring any developer involvement. We give your content teams full autonomy over managing the content of Hugo sites without the fear that they'll break something or break brand guidelines. And we free up your engineering team to focus their time on building highly polished page components. All of this extra efficiency results in a higher quality end product. So devs can do a better job of serving the end customers. If you'd like to know more about Bookshop and Hugo, tune in here at hugoconf.io tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time for a full workshop on how to get set up with Bookshop on your Hugo sites. You'll be able to ask our senior software engineer, Liam Bigelow, the creator and lead maintainer of Bookshop, questions about how it all works and how you can use Bookshop with your existing Hugo sites. Before the workshop, you might like to try it out for yourself via the Megakit template on cloudcanon.com. You can sign up there for a free 14-day trial and give it a go yourself. I'd also like to plug my colleague Jan Klaassen's talk about Habitstack, Hugo, Alpine, Bookshop, and Tailwind. Um, he uses the stack in his work for Twitch. He created the hugoconf.io site with it, and it's been a dream to update and to work on. You can sign up for a free trial of our CMS at cloudcanon.com. And when you're there, you can connect a sample repo or spin up a, a new template site using the web UI. As I said before, I'd recommend checking out the Megakit template I showed. It's a great example of the kind of work anyone can do with any Hugo site on Cloud Cannon. Finally, I want to give a quick personal shout out to Steve uh, Francia and Bjorn Eric Peterson for creating and for maintaining Hugo. It's a fantastic tool and it's one that actively makes me excited about making new sites or even just talking about them. If you're interested in anything I've talked about today, feel free to shoot me an email, david at cloudcanon.com or a DM on Twitter. I'm uh, Avid Large on Twitter, or you can follow the team at cloudcanon on Twitter. Our product devs are really responsive to support questions too. So feel free to reach out if you have any questions or issues getting started. Thanks.